um, was messing around with my Casio keyboard, uh, trying to hack into it, seeing what I could do to um, screw it up. And I found out there's a memory pin in there, there's a memory chip, that if you touch pins together, you start shorting out things, and it goes haywire. So I thought, well, what can you do to externalize this and make this kind of performance device? So I created the virtual blackboard, where I thought, okay, you know, it sounds sort of like, when, when you mess with these memory pins, it sounds screechy. So I thought, well, you know, fingernails on a blackboard also sound screechy. Let's go with that metaphor. And so we have sort of this thing. So, old little Casio style. And what you do, you just do like the little gesture movement. You actually don't need to touch it. It's really sensitive. You just get near it. It's uh, glitchy. It's what I was going for. Um, it's about all I can really say about it. Can you talk a little bit about the hardware? Like, what did you build the hardware to control the keyboard? And have okay. Like well, inside the keyboard, there's a 40-pin memory chip, where um, each individual individual pin. What I have is I have a, a connection out to what's called a serial in parallel out. So it takes a serial data stream of bits, and it pushes these bits onto this 40-pin parallel bus. And each of these bits controls whether or not these memory pins are connected to a common little um, wire sort of backbone. So if the, if the bit is on, then pin is connected to what other, other pins are also connected to this backbone. And so it sort of emulates this sort of stroking of um, the memory pins with wire sort of in digital form. Um, and what happens is that it takes analog input from a wire that I have here, it's a capacitive sensor where it just modifies, it just detects capacitance on the board, takes the analog version of that, sends raw bits into this little SIPO gate and just connects pins randomly in this keyboard. And so you get nice little, you know, effects. What's the board? What? What's the board? The board? That's yeah, just a sheet metal. So it's connected. It's connected. Yeah. Is it possible to have different position on the board send different signals to the uh, board? Like in a roundabout way, yes. I mean, um, if I touch it, let me start up here. If I touch it really softly over here, you'll get different effects than if I press really hard down there, just because it's getting an analog input. Um, and it's pressure sensitive and velocity sensitive uh, board. I haven't optimized it, so I don't exactly have have the maximum range of gestures, but it's roughly you get, you'll get different effects. Is it possible to extend it to actually create music, like uh, waving your hand on the machine? Sure. Like I mean, this is a it's a very generic interface. The sensor is totally um, separate from the actual keyboard device. So you can take the sensor and sort of input it into sort of whatever you want. It just sends analog inputs um, to the big microcontroller. So I guess you could definitely create a synthesis, synthesis algorithm. And what kind of sensor do you use? It's just a capacitive sensor. It just detects the change of capacitance on this board. Oh, just change of capacitance. Yeah. Um, and so it's, detect, it's not only sensitive to touching it, but you know, getting near it because yeah. you're modifying capacitances. It's very sensitive though to ground stuff. I, I found out a problem is that you can't connect the power to anything in the room. I have to power it off a battery. Actually, it provided me as a laptop to use with that. Um, if you connect it to a power source, there's some sort of ground loops that occur that um, make it differently. Um, so it's with my capacitance thing, I learned that it, it likes a real nice earth ground. Gotcha. Like dirt. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Well, actually, what it does in passive sensor it. It sort of feeds a 50 kilohertz signal, square wave, in your body. And um, it just detects like the change in capacitance by lagging, um, you know, by sort of how much the signal lags using XOR gate. If the signals are exactly in, in phase, you're not really touching at all. And when you touch it, the signals get out of phase a bit because of the capacitance. And then your XOR gate starts to rise a bit more. Um, yeah, there's a lot of little ground. So the size of the bo actual board would change things. 
A bit, not too much though. I was, I was surprised in that you know I can get sort of similar effects if I don't have it connected. I just have that little bare wire. Uh -huh. I can just sort of stroke it. Um, okay. You get different effects, but it's quite quite similar. I, I would have thought it would have been quite a difference, but. What about like a conductor uh, substance that you're touching? You can do an extraordinary amount of things. Like, um, yeah, I can possibly touch key. I think keys work. Um, just because it's sort of connected to my body in a roundabout way. Um, you can also, we played around this last time, you can have someone there, and if you have someone like connected in the chain, finally connected to an earth ground at the end of the chain, it'll affect it much differently than if I'm just standing here. So if I was touching, let's say, a, um, a wallet or something metal, then I could be really close or really far away and it would still act up.